Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using the Knock Me Blackout and Knock Me Color Out plugins with Photoshop. If you're going to print onto a black or coloured shirt, you will require a white underbase so that your prints look natural. And there are a couple of ways in which we can approach this task. In the past, we have described the use of the Windows underbase method, and this requires the user to determine where they don't want the underbase to be printed by giving all pixels in these areas an RGB value of 255, 255, 255, or pure white. Now, whilst this method is effective to a point, it does have a couple of major drawbacks. Firstly, the preview will not give a very good indication of how the end results are going to look, or even where the underbase will and won't print. Secondly, this method generally tends to generate hard edges. You either print an underbase or you won't. There is no real in between, and this makes creating gradients that encompass your shirt colors unachievable. So in this tutorial, we will explore a second and far better method that has been developed around using a transparency layer to define your white underbase. This approach will certainly give you the most flexibility and will even reduce the amount of ink required. Additionally, you will be able to blend graphics into the shirt color with complete freedom. Photoshop has several tools to assist when working with transparencies, and the Not Me Blackout and Not Me Color Out plugins will greatly help you create transparent areas for your images. Now, of course, once your transparency layer is all sorted, the file will need to be sent to Fast Artist or Fast Rip for production. The icing on the cake here is that both these applications will recognize and use the transparencies within your images to create a perfect white underbase for your shirts. Okay, so let's get started then and look at how these features work. We're going to start in Photoshop and on screen you can see I have the image to be used for this demo. One important point to make here is that the plugin feature we are going to be using has been optimized to work with RGB images only. So when working with transparencies as a method for underbasing, it's recommended that you only work with RGB images. We can't apply transparencies to our background layer in Photoshop, so the first task is to create a new layer. I'm going to do this by simply dragging the existing layer down to the Create New Layer tool here on the bottom right, and then Release, and you can see a new layer has been created in my layer palette. Now we won't need the original background layer, so it can be deleted. Okay, if I go to the filter menu, you can see there is a Cadlink option, and from here we can access both the Knock Me Blackout and Knock Me Color Out tools. Knock Me Color Out can be used to remove any color, including black and white. And while we could use this feature to remove a black background, the dedicated Knock Me Blackout filter will do a much better job on blacks or colors that are very close to black. This feature works in a similar way to the Select Color Range feature that's built into Photoshop. However, the Knock Me Blackout tool will do a significantly better job. The simple rule to remember here is that when we're working with black, use Knock Me Blackout, and when we're working with any other color, use Knock Me Color Out. For the best results across all image types, consider these plugins as additional tools to Photoshop's extensive features. For example, there will be times when it's easier to use Photoshop's Magic Wand feature rather than Knock Me Color Out, or the Color Range feature. Okay, so back to our example. I'm going to be using Knock Me Blackout for this one. You can see this image is now displayed in the filtered dialog in both its original state and as a preview of what we are going to get. Now at the moment, this preview mode is set to transparent. And this is how the image will look once it is saved back to the main Photoshop interface. It basically allows us to see what will be produced during the color pass of our finished print. The next option down from this is the Show Underbase Preview, and this provides a visual of what our white ink layer will look like. 
the preview is actually inverted so it's the areas of black on screen that will become our white when we print as I adjust the underbase strength at the top here you can see the preview changes to reflect my adjustments the last preview mode is shirt color and this gives a true representation of how our complete image will look once produced on a black shirt the great feature here is being able to instantly see what the design will look like on any other color shirt and we can do this by clicking on this color and then selecting a replacement red for example okay so as described before this slider will control the under base strength as it's increased so too is the color pass and if we reduce this then less white ink will be used you can use the reset button here to return to the under base defaults at any time now when you first use this feature it's a good idea to adjust the under base up and down and switch between the three preview modes in turn to see how your adjustments affect the image this illustration shows what the previews look like with the under base left on its default and at the bottom how they look with the under base set to its max of 255 now when the under base strength is adjusted it will not affect the areas that use 100% white ink or areas that have no white ink but it will alter the amount of white being used to blend the black color of the shirt into the colors of our image okay so I now have another example on screen and this time we're going to take a look at knock me color out now as I'm sure you have noticed there is no major difference other than the addition of this box which allows me to select the color I want to remove from my image this can be done by either clicking here and choosing the color from the palette or clicking on the original image the other difference here is that the under base range is 0 to 1000 with a default of 100. So let's take a look at how the under base range can be adjusted to suit the image and color of shirt we are going to print onto. I'm going to leave the under base setting on its default of 100 and then switch to the under base view okay you can see here that the under base is pretty strong now I'm going to switch to the shirt color view and you can see here it's set as if I was going to print onto a black shirt and the results look very good now because I'm using a black shirt I would need a good deal of under base to make the reds and other colors look natural as a comparison let's jump back to the transparent view and alter the under base settings to 650 the preview now shows the image to be far more washed out and this is because we are going to be using a lot less ink and this will allow the shirt color to show through more and blend with the image okay so now I'm going to switch to the shirt color view and you can see straight away that the image is nowhere near as natural as the previous example when printed on a black shirt but watch now as I change my shirt color to red you can see straight away that the results look much more pleasing and bright okay so by using less underbase we can take advantage of the vivid shirt color this creates a nicer blend between the image and the shirt and will ultimately use less ink the thing to remember here is that when setting your underbase strength it's important to consider your shirt color and the color within your images the real bonus of this feature is that these three simple views allow you to preview your colors before you commit to running a print. So that concludes this tutorial, but to learn more about these plugins, check out the next tutorial in this series which shows how to deal with images that have soft edges and contain some tips on color management and sending your jobs to FastRip and FastArtist.